Hello. Hi, everyone. Sorry that we're a tiny bit late starting there. We had a few technical issues. We couldn't hear David, and we always need to hear David. Um, but we all are here, and we can hear each other, so that's all very good. Um, so just a couple of introductions. Um, my name's Laura. Um, I'm Head of Customer Success here. Um, my job today is just to be the host for everyone. Um, the main man's David. Um, he's head of customer support. Um, he'll be taking you through the, the main part of the demo. And then on the keyboards, again, we have Will. So feel free to ask any questions as you want as you go along, and um, we'll be answering them. Um, if he doesn't answer them and he moves them into a little Q&A only, um, don't worry. That means that he's just saving them at the end for David to do a bit of a bigger demo through. It might be something that needs a bit more explaining on screen um, rather than a very quick um, reply. So um, yeah, feel free to ask questions as you go along. We will try and keep it to half an hour-ish. Um, and yeah, so off we go. Um, oh, I've got to say, obviously, um, I'm guessing you know why you sound up. It's this one, this webinar is all about image captures. So all the times that um, you take a screenshot and something's not quite right, there's quite a lot of things you can do to quickly make that screenshot how you like it. So David's just going to run through these bits now, now that we can hear him. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, <laughs> sorry, we're a few minutes late. That was a, a bit of a frantic restart there, but it's all fixed. Uh, so yeah, thank you for joining today. Um, yes, as Laura mentioned, um, we are going to be focusing specifically on uh, all things screenshots and images within Coverage Book. Uh, I'll try to keep it to under 20 minutes if I can. Um, and we will look at our default screenshots and how they show uh, in the final report if you do nothing to them at all. But we'll also look at how you can use the image frame uh, to refocus uh, to the specific key mention uh, within your client's coverage. And we'll also look at how you can tidy up uh, images by cropping them. Um, we also have a toolbar extension, which I'm sure many of you have already used, uh, but we'll cover how you can retake screenshots when needed and also uh, how you can bookmark URLs to import into your reports uh, quickly using the Clipper extension. Uh, and then finally, if you would like to uh, or need to add your own images manually, we will also cover um, how you can do that quickly uh, and get those images into your reports. Uh, so first off, we are going to look at our default screenshots. Um, this will just be a super quick overview. Oh, hang on a sec. Just need to sign in, won't be a moment. Sorry, it's because I had to restart my computer just a moment ago, won't be a sec. Okay, we are back. Right, so I'm just gonna turn my screen share on. So hopefully you can all now see my uh, second screen. Uh, yeah, looks like you can, great. Okay, um, yeah, so just very, very quickly, um, I'm sure that you've already imported some coverage links uh, into your reports and you have a pretty good idea of, of how we take screenshots, but just to cover that super, super quickly. Uh, so we will grab not only metrics information about uh, the website and um, individual engagements and so on. Um, we're actually going to cover that next. Uh, so data is coming next. Um, we also um, take a full length screenshot of the coverage and we, we try to do that automatically. Um, so for this particular article, we will show the main part of the image first. But if you click into this, um, you can actually see that we capture a really long screenshot of the article. Um, it's typically over 10 sort of full screen pages that we'll capture. Um, yeah, I mean, this is a, this is a super long article and, and I'm, I'm keeping scrolling. Um, so yes, we capture quite a long screenshot where possible. Um, if you do nothing to the article and you share your report with others, they will see this main kind of image that you see here. And when they click into this image as a report reader, uh, they can view the article in full as if they visited the page uh, directly from their browser. So this will be the same if you're viewing uh, the shared report as an online link uh, or if you are viewing the digital version of the PDF, if you, if you tend to share it that way. 
So the first thing we're going to look at is the image frame option. And this is where you can really customize the images to focus in on a key mention or a key part of the coverage. Uh, so I'm gonna head over to my um, roundups section here. And we're gonna have a look at this particular article from Content Grip, which has uh, five recommended PR tools, uh, one of which was coverage book. Um, so because we show the main image of the page by default, I actually want to show the coverage book mention. Uh, so to do this, I can click anywhere within the main screenshot. And if I click on the first image editing option, which is image frame, uh, that will open up a green window on the left. And this is basically, uh, if, if you like, the, the kind of the focus frame. And you can drag this to any part of the article to showcase it. So I'm just going to drag it down to our coverage book mentioned there. And then hit on Save Changes. So now when I share this article with others, um, they will see this main mention first and foremost in the report. Uh, but of course, because we've still we've still taken that full length screenshot, uh, they can click into it at any point to read the full article as well. So so it's basically preserved that full screenshot. At the moment, it's only possible to set one focus area per article. But if you did want to include other um, images, you can do that manually and we'll cover that uh, in more detail a little bit later on. So in addition to uh, being able to set a focus frame around the, the kind of the key part of the article, you can also use our cropping tool just to tidy it up a little bit. So um, for example, in this Medium article, it's kind of picked up a little bit of extra space at the top. And we've also got this, uh, this banner that goes down the right hand side, which um, I don't necessarily want or need to show in the final report. Uh, so what I can do is just click into the screenshot and go to the crop option. And from here, I can use the uh, my mouse just to drag down the blue crop area. Uh, so I'm just gonna quickly tidy that up. Um, you can, if you want to, use this as well, just to remove all of the extra kind of ads and bits from the bottom of a web page. Um, so you can just keep dragging that up until, until you get rid of it all. Great, so I am just left now with uh, just the main article text uh, and I've gotten rid of all the other bits. Um, you can't currently crop out anything from the middle of a page, so it will only be from the top, sides and bottom. Um, and the crop option also works with both online and any other coverage images that you add manually. So you can crop any images that you import, um, which is quite useful if you've got like, um, perhaps you've got uh, a, one of those sort of press clippings packs from uh, a media monitoring service that has the, the info at the top that you want to crop out. And um, you could quickly and easily do that here. So at this point, um, you can hit save changes. Um, it is a permanent change. So if you do accidentally um, crop an image and you want to get it back again, once you hit save, you won't be able to, but you can re-import uh, the page using the retext screenshot option, or you can add in an image manually. So you can save it if that happens. Um, but as you are cropping, uh, you can also hit the revert option and that will just uh, bring it back to its usual size. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and save this one. Okay. So what you should see now is just a, a just a nicer, slightly larger cropped image of that particular article. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's a really nice way of kind of tidying up your images a little bit more. So we've looked at how you can um, refocus the image and crop images. Um, where possible with Coverage Book, we try to take the best possible uh, screenshot of a page that we can. Um, but sometimes like an ad or a cookies window will get in the way when we try to take the coverage. Um, we employ um, yeah, a range of settings to try and avoid this from happening but uh, with so many different websites and some are way better than others, um, there might be some where we do pick things up from time to time. Um, if you're scrolling through your coverage um, view, 
you will see that that the ones with the gray overlay are usually the ones where we've picked up something like an ad or a pop-up. Um, and I think we have on this spin sucks article. So if I click into this and then go and visit the full screenshot. Yeah. So I can see that there's a like a newsletter kind of sign up window that's gotten in the way. Um, if you do tend to find that you have coverage uh, regularly from websites where they're picking up things like ads and pop-ups, uh, do get in touch with the details of those because we might be able to automatically uh, adjust the settings for each website individually so that we can capture better images in future. So um, you can certainly use this retake option that I'm about to show you now, but uh, do let us know about any broken images as you find them because we might just be able to save you time in fixing those uh, for future for you. Uh, so what you can do now is if you haven't already installed the coverage book clipper toolbar, um, you can do that in two different ways. So you can either just visit the Chrome web store directly uh, and just type in coverage book or coverage book clipper and you can download it uh, directly from the Chrome store. Or alternatively, um, you will be prompted to download it when you click on the retake screenshot option here. Um, so yeah, it's quick and easy to download. Um, it only works for Chrome at the moment though, so you won't be able to use it on any other browsers. So if I click on the retake screenshot option, um, this will load the page uh, within the coverage book browser. Um, unfortunately, I can't show you with this page because I must have visited at some point in the past and already accepted <laughs> that window uh, from my tab, which it's remembered. Um, but essentially what you would do is just scroll through the page uh, and close any pop-ups or ads or other um, unwanted things that have gotten in the way of the screenshot. When you're happy you have a clean page, uh, you can hit the take screenshot button. Um, a couple of tips here. The first one is um, sometimes websites can be a little bit lazy in, in loading all of the ads and pop-ups, and sometimes they'll just sneak up on you um, when you least expect it. So it's it's worth just waiting a couple of moments for the page to kind of load and for everything to, to, to appear first so that you can close it off before you hit the take screenshot button, just in case one sneaks in at the last moment. Um, the other thing to mention as well is that our toolbar can sometimes hide a pop-up that's underneath it and you won't be able to, to click OK because it's it's somewhere under this kind of blue-green bar. Um, if that does happen, what you can do is just visit the page separately uh, in another tab, close or accept that window and then go back um, to the coverage book tab and it should remember that you've already been there and closed it off so that you can just take the screenshot afresh. Uh, so I can just hit take screenshot now. That should prepare the image and then I should just be able to save that to the report. Yeah, okay, great. So, so that has worked. I've got a nice uh, clean image now and it's removed that gray overlay and the pop-ups. Um, with the clipper toolbar, there are a few times when we might not be able to get screenshots or get or get perfect screenshots back. And um, the first example is where a web page will use kind of like one of those sticky banners that tends to follow you as you scroll through the page uh, and it never, ever goes away. So what you might find is that you'll use the retake screenshot um, option but you'll see like a repeating ad banner or something like that that kind of scrolls all the way through uh, the screenshot. Um, unfortunately, there's not a lot we can do to fix that automatically right now. Um, one option that might work is to use the image frame to try and reposition the screenshot into a better place uh, or to focus on the mention. So you don't quite often see that. Um, or alternatively, you can add your own image manually, which we'll cover uh, at the end. Um, but do let us know if you're finding that issue with a web page because we might actually just be able to fix um, what's happening with it anyway um, so that you won't have to retake the screenshot yourself. The other thing that can happen from time to time as well is that um, after a period of time, we uh, the, the coverage book clipper toolbar might time out 
Uh, and this can happen if the web page is like super, super long, or it's one of those pages where it's like an ever scrolling content where the URL keeps changing as you're, as you're kind of scrolling down the page. Um, they are very, very difficult to capture. Um, so again, if that happens, you might just need to go and take a screenshot of the specific part of the page that you're looking for and get that imported into the book. Uh, and probably the third main reason that the, the clipper doesn't work, and it's not immediately obvious when this happens, but it could just be that the web page blocks our toolbar from working on their site. Uh, and again, unfortunately, there's not a lot that we can do um, with that. Um, we will over time hopefully develop and improve on that. Um, but there are some other tools that you can use uh, to help take screenshots manually. Um, I'm pretty sure most of you have already got some that you use already. Uh, please do share in the chat if, if, that's, if, if you've got a good example that you can um, share with the others. Um, I've used Awesome Screenshot in the past. I find that that's pretty good. Um, it does offer a limited free um, number of captures and there are some subscriptions that you can use, um, but it's pretty good. So if you click on it, you can take just the visible part of the page, the full page, or you can do a selected area. So that's quite a nice one to use. Uh, I know that a few of our customers use Evernote and that has its own kind of screenshot tool built in. Uh, and also the Windows um, kind of just normal clipper and the um, the Max uh, screenshot tool I use all the time and it's super quick and easy. So before we continue on to look at adding images manually, the last thing that you can do with the Clipper toolbar uh, is that you can actually bookmark coverage with it. Um, so if you tend to search through uh, websites looking for coverage yourself, um, rather than sort of get those from like a clipping service or a list or whatever. Um, as you visit each page, if you go to the coverage book clipper toolbar uh, and then just hit on bookmark this page, you can, I've just chosen a couple of random websites here, uh, one of which is coverage book. <laughs> um, you can basically just, uh, you can bookmark pages as you go along. We'll save them in this handy little clipper and then you can just copy them all to clipboard go back to coverage book, and then you can just quickly um, get those imported into your book just by pressing uh, add coverage. So yeah, it's a really quick and easy way of just uh, kind of bookmarking your, your clippings as you're going. So the final thing that we're gonna look at is adding images manually. So uh, there may be times when you just want to add your own images because you have nicely edited ones or you want to include um, more, or perhaps it's because um, for some reason um, you need to import an image as we discussed earlier, um, then that is possible to add as many images as you like to both online coverage items and coverage file as well. Um, and we're gonna look at doing that now. So I mentioned earlier that um, we take a really long screenshot, but sometimes web pages are super, super long. Uh, this is a great example from PR.co. Uh, uh, it's kind of like a really in-depth guide of PR tools, and it's a it's a massive page full of uh, resources. Um, and yeah, we've already captured a really long screenshot, but um, the coverage book mention is tucked away down in the reporting chapter of this page. So um, there was just no way that we were going to capture that in, in one image. Uh, but what you can do is if you just visit that web page, uh, you can either just scroll down uh, until you get to a particular mention, or if you just use the control F or command F function in your browser, uh, type it right, great. You can just search for coverage book or, or whatever your brand's mention is, and it should take you to that part of the page quickly. And then what I can do from here is just uh, get that aligned and I'm going to use uh, Command, Shift, and 4. And I'm just going to take a quick screenshot of that coverage book mention. And the good thing about using kind of like this type of uh, tool is that if you, if, you get, if you get it looking how you want it, you won't have to fiddle around with cropping it afterwards. Uh, so I can just capture that image. And then if I just go back to the coverage item, I can click on Add Images here. 
or I can click on the plus item uh, on the left hand side um, and I can add images manually. So you can add JPEG, PNG, GIF and single and multi-page uh, PDFs as additional images. And so again, if you do have kind of like a multi-page PDF, you can just uh, import that as one and we will break out each image individually in this list on the left. Uh, just one other thing to mention as well. Um, it's best to import higher quality image files where possible, um, particularly if you tend to get um, sort of smaller. Um, I'm just, just reading a message from Agnes about print clippings. Yeah, absolutely. So you can add print clippings um, as manual images like I'm doing here. There's no difference. Uh, what I would say is if you tend to get those clippings sent from a service and they're very small, um, you might want to just save them as higher resolution JPEGs so that when you import them to coverage, but they're going to look nice and crisp and clear. Uh, yeah, so when you've imported that image of, of the mention, you'll see that the, the main default screenshot is at the top. And then you'll have that additional mention that I've added below. Um, this is how it will appear in the final report if you share it. But you can also reorder the images uh, by dragging and dropping those. So in this case, uh, I want to have the coverage book mentioned as the main image. So now uh, I've now got that as the main image, but I also still have the, uh, the full article as an additional image attachment here as well. So if I share this report with anyone, when they view the online report, they can, they can click into both of these to view uh, both full screen attachments. And as I say, you can have as many as you like along the bottom here. If you share your report as a PDF as well, um, what you will see is that each image that you add uh, and that shows as one of these attachments will show as a separate page in the shared PDF. Um, so those will those will show as full pages as you scroll through. And then the final thing that you can do with um, image editing um, and in particular kind of adding your own images is that you might not want to show our default screenshot. So for whatever reason, if it's either a bad image um, and you've had to add your own one manually, or perhaps in this particular case, you've got um, like a, a super big article that kind of, um, you, you just need to get to the mention. You can actually just click on the hide option and it will just remove that from the public view of the report. So it will still keep that screenshot saved um, it just means that it won't show in the final shared book um, when you send it to your clients. So, so you can really use this as a good way to not only kind of reorganize um, the, the images and how they appear, but also which images of coverage are visible to the report readers. So that's pretty much everything I had to share today in terms of um, screenshots and image editing. I hope you found that really, really useful. Um, it looks like we've had quite a few questions uh, in the chat. So uh, thank you, Will, for, for covering all of those. Um, was there anything else that you wanted me to go through, uh, Laura? Um, I think Will's been um, covering most of it as we went along. So um, thank you very much for going through that. Um, lots of people on the recording. Um, so yes, we'll send it through to um, the emails that you signed up to. Um, Oh, there's a few more coming through. So very quickly, is there a stop button for retake the screenshot option? Some websites offer one article, provide the other articles that continue one by one. So when I take the screenshot, the clipper can't take it. Yeah, really good question. Um, that was probably one of the examples that I mentioned earlier, where you have those web pages that constantly change uh, the article content and the URL as you're scrolling through those it's really, really difficult um, for our Clipper tool to work in that scenario because it will try and just capture as much of the page in one go. So there isn't a stop button at the moment, but that does sound like it would be, it would be something that would be really useful. Um, this is kind of the first iteration of our own um, automated toolbar uh, extension that, that we've built kind of separately to work with coverage book. Um, so I'm sure that we will develop it over time. So it's really good to get feedback like that. Um, but yeah, in that example, it would be really difficult for it to work. So we would probably um, 
we would probably ask you to maybe just upload um, just the, the part of that, of that page that, that you wanted to add to coverage book manually. And then you can just hide the default screenshot if it hasn't captured it properly. Um, but again, do let us know if you tend to find that pages like that aren't, aren't capturing automatically, because it might be that we can tweak a setting somewhere um, so that we can capture that better in future. Thank you. And I think the last question is, um, what's a great way to export the clips? So I guess um, if you could just quickly show um, how the, then go to the um, preview book page. Yeah, so um, so in terms of exporting clips, did you mean just to ha how to share them or how to kind of export the images? Of oh, the I assumed it was share the um, report. So if you quickly show share the report. Yeah, sure. So uh, there are three options that you can do to share the report. Uh, if you go down to the share book option on the bottom left hand corner, um, you can share using the uh, cus custom coverage book URL here. If you copy this shareable link and send it to um, send it to anybody, when they open that link, it will take them to a live up to date version of the report in their account. Um, in your account even. So it's a really good way of, of um, keeping them up to date with the report as it is right now. Um, we mentioned this last time as well, but there's a really cool feature where you can click on the contents page and you can share any of these sections with your clients directly as well. So if you just wanted to share the Facebook URL with your clients, you can quickly copy and paste that link uh, and send that on. We also have a couple of other options. Um, so you can download a PDF of the report as well, um, and you can include a link to that PDF from within the online report. I haven't actually downloaded one in this book because I've literally just made it an hour ago. Um, but you will see that there's a toggle switch here that you can, um, you can basically select whether you want your report readers to have access to that PDF and or the CSV export as well. Um, so yeah, that's the final export, which would be uh, to download all of the data in the book. And this would basically give you all of the links, the metrics numbers, the article title, etc. So it's a really good spreadsheet export uh, to get hold of all of the data. Um, I was going to end it, but we have got a couple of very good questions come through. Go um, Instagram stories, what's the best way to grab them? Oh, yeah, really good question. Um, I <laughs> so I think this will probably end up being another little webinar all on its own in future, uh, because there's a lot that you can do here. I would suggest the best way to do it would be, if possible, to capture an MP4 recording of the story. Um, there is uh, or there are some tools available online that you can use to do this. And one of them is uh, Storysaver.net. Um, I've not had extensive use of this, but I do know that um, some customers have used it in the past. Uh, so you can use a tool like this, for example, to download um, MP4 versions of the story. And then what you can do is um, you can upload those as a coverage file. Uh, so you can upload both images and um, movies. Um, if you prefer, you can also just upload an, an image or the best image or a series of images of the story manually, if, if that's how you want to do it. Uh, I might even have an example. Yes, I do. So uh, <laughs> you'll have to excuse me because this is from my Instagram account where I was really happy that I made some sourdough once. Uh, but essentially um, what you can do is just upload the MP4 of, this, of the Instagram story. Okay, and uh, then I can just create that clip. Um, I can give it a date. And if you have already set up uh, or have imported coverage from that Instagram in influencer before, you can search for them in this box and then just select the influencer's account so that we've got all of their details. Uh, but this is a brand new book for me, so I haven't got, haven't got that information just yet. Uh, so I can save that to the book. That will just take a few months to come through. And then what I can do is just quickly create uh, an Instagram for that. So I can choose it as uh, social. 
I can give it an outlet outlet name of David's IG account. Uh, excuse my spelling. Um, you can basically give it a quick description here as well. So you can even copy and paste the emojis and the bio text that you see from the influencer's account. But as I say, if you have uploaded any static posts from that influencer before, um, you should already have all of this information uh, that you can just use again. So I can create uh, that particular uh, outlet now. Uh, I can add a follow account for it. So um, only... Well, 250 followers for me is a bit extreme. Uh, <laughs> use Instagram. But uh, yeah, so you can basically set the audience number. And I mean, we're going to cover this in the next webinar in two weeks about custom metrics and stuff. But basically, yeah. And so for now, um, you can actually, when you share this report with others, there is now a playable version of that story that you can share. So that's a really good way of um, showcasing Instagram stories manually. Because unfortunately, they don't allow us to get access to those. Um, but that's a good way that you can do that. That probably lead, does lead us very nicely on to um, the next webinar, which will be um, all to do with all things metrics. Um, so um, a deep dive into the metrics that we use, where we get the numbers from, um, what metrics you might want to use for what campaign. Um, we'll go through um, what David showed as um, where you might want to add your own metrics um and so uh when i send the recording for this which i'll send to you guys on friday um i'll also send a link to the next webinar um so you can sign up for that one um and feel free to reply to that with um any metrics questions that you specifically want answered and we'll make sure to include it um and it's probably looking to me like the following one should maybe be on social david um and we could do a deeper okay. dive into different ways to add the different sort of social coverage um so the next one on metrics and then probably something like social following that um so thank you very much everyone sorry for the slightly late start technology always goes down at the one moment that you need it but we we came back quickly um, um thank you david and will as well um, I hope everyone found that useful. Um, if there's any questions that we have missed, um, always um, feel free to um, email support at coveragebook.com and um, we'll get back to you. Um, Lisa, very quickly, yes, I'll include, we're, we've got an area where we're including all of the um, webinars. So I'll include the link which will have this webinar on it and the one from last week as well. So you'll be able to see both of them. Um, but hopefully see you all in a couple of weeks time. Thank you, everyone. Great to see you all. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.